What up guys, welcome back to the channel, man. Today we are going to be working on getting this damn engine out of the sedan, bro. It's currently 10 o'clock in the morning right now. Braven's at school, Braven gets out of school at 2.20. So I have to leave here because his school is kind of far from the house. I have to leave here by 1.50, bro. So it's 10 a.m. I think that's plenty enough time to get the engine out, right? <laughs> Basically, I want to have it finished before I have to leave here to go pick Braven up, so. Yeah, that's the goal, so we better get cracking on it. Jesus Christ, man. Thing's fucking heavy. Can't get it over this little freaking lump, bro. Like... <sighs> I need to get back in the gym, man. For real. Show her who's boss, you know what I'm saying? Ugh. Freaking Max, dude. This car never lets me down. Never lets me down. God. It almost rolled right back down the yard. Well, I am going to start off by just disconnecting as much as I can on top. Um, I'll more than likely miss something. Seems like you always do, right? Whenever you're pulling an engine out, you're like, all right, everything's unhooked. And you get underneath, start, you know, undoing the T-bracket and all that kind of shit. And then realize, oh, damn, I forgot the fuel return or something. But I don't know. I'm going to get all the fuel lines disconnected. Um, obviously, like the grounds, pull the radiator, I'm going to pull the intake off, unplug the wiring harness, all that kind of shit. What I should do first... Is open the gas tank just in case oh did you hear it you probably couldn't hear it just set it set that on there gently so it stays venting I always loosen the gas cap if you don't know like right now when I opened it you can hear that little psh, that that means that there's pressure in there so whenever you unhook the fuel lines you don't want the gas to just keep running out I mean it's gonna leak a little bit no matter what there's really nothing you can do about it but you don't want it to just, if there's pressure in there, it'll keep pushing fuel out till there's no pressure. You know what I'm saying? Check that out. The rock lodged in here. I'm guessing from whenever the car rolled over. That thing is fucking in there, boy. Jesus. There it is. Ugh. Yep, that thing was lodged in there. That that must be from the rollover. I only thing I know is that it happened on the freeway. So Alright, well the radiator is empty. He did mention to me that he thinks that it might be cracked. Where he was looking at it and he said it was cracked. I haven't even looked at it yet, but yeah. If it is, then he's gonna have to get a new one for the hatch. So he's got this cable to hydro conversion adapter thing on here. And as you, dude, the only thing I did right now was loosen the cable from this. Like all of this was already like that. Like, do you see all that movement? You see the point where it actually presses on the fork for the throttle bearing? Like, look at all that movement, bro. Dude, that's nuts. He said that this thing was rough. Like it was hard as hell to push and I believe him, bro. 
Definitely believe him. That's the reason why he picked up a full hydro conversion that we're gonna be installing on the hatch out there. He ordered it from Hush Performance, so um, it's gonna be just a full hydro setup. Kinda how my hatch is, you know what I'm saying? So it'll have a master cylinder, basically, that you have to bolt up to the pedal assembly. It'll have its own little reservoir and everything, and then there'll be an actual hydraulic line that's gonna run out here. He will need a slave cylinder, so obviously there's not one on here i don't know if the hush performance kit came with one or not i'll have to check it out but so far i got the wiring harness all disconnected uh i disconnected the starter got that damn radiator out of the way in which i do think that it's cracked so he's probably gonna need a new radiator i was working on getting this thing disconnected in which bang that's done so i'm gonna get this pulled up out of the way gotta do the throttle cable fuel lines yeah So everything on top is disconnected. Um, honestly, we're almost done, bro. <laughs> the only thing I want to do before I jack the car up is I want to get that one bolt back here on the T-bracket, the one that actually goes through the mount. So I'm going to pull that one while, you know, the car's low and I'm able to get to it easily. And then we'll get this thing jacked up. Get the wheels off it. All right, I actually got two T-bracket bolts jack this thing up now almost forgot to crack the lug nuts loose first good thing i got a key for this huh i think everybody has a key for those right <laughs> Definitely going to ugh, drain this. Come on, fucker. All right. Anyhow, definitely going to drain the oil from this transmission before we go pulling any damn axles. The goal is to keep my back patio free of oil stains, bro. <laughs> I've got enough of them out front. It's always a struggle trying to figure out exactly where the waterfall is going to hit, right? <laughs> oh my god okay what the hell dude that stuff looked really watery that's weird i wonder what the hell he had in there can actually lower the passenger side a little bit i like to do that whenever i'm draining the transmission so then gravity actually helps get like all of it out you know what i'm saying so yeah there goes some more water coming from somewhere <laughs> that's weird because it didn't have any heater lines where's that coming from oh okay it's coming from the thermostat housing so braven lost my damn 32 millimeter i can't find it anywhere to actually pull the axle off but i remembered i do have a kit now do you guys remember whenever we did david's uh coilovers on his corolla yes corolla it's not a camry yeah <laughs> But yeah, I remember whenever we did his coilovers, um, we needed to replace his axle, but I didn't have a 30 millimeter axle nut socket. And we ended up having to go to the store. And we had this big old problem that it was too shallow. Then Junior had to bring one and all that. Anyhow, if I would have just went through all the tools that I have in there, like all the stuff that my brother gave me, I actually have a Matco freaking seven piece axle nut socket set, dude. Like what the hell, go figure, right? Look at this, look, 30 millimeter right freaking there. <laughs> fucking ricer anyhow we need the 32 so i'll leave that out but right now i need the swivel 12 i was gonna leave the header on but i'm gonna have to unbolt it and i was also gonna drop the engine through the bottom i like doing it through the bottom but i think i'm probably gonna end up having to pick it up through the top because if you get down here i just realized the header comes back and it is welded directly to the cat and then from the cat it's welded directly to the pipe like this exhaust is literally all one piece all one piece with the header bro <laughs> oh my god man so 
<sighs> I'm gonna have to cut it somewhere. I I don't know where. Anyhow, for the time being, I think I'm just gonna have to because in order to to get the header off or in order to drop the engine through the bottom. I'd have to get the whole entire exhaust off. I don't know. I'm just gonna freaking unbolt the header and then try to wiggle the engine out the top, I guess. Fuck, dude. <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna be able to do that. I'm gonna have to cut this damn exhaust, like, before I can do anything, I'm gonna have to cut this exhaust. <sighs> The problem is since it's all welded together like you can't really pull the header forward at all now i would try to get the engine all like loose and try to slide the engine back or something but the header is also hitting down here on the subframe where the guy that put this engine in before he notched it like a little bit too far on this side and not quite enough on this side that looks like that was probably making some noise to me bro because it's literally sitting against the header literally touching <laughs> i need to get a sawzall that's why i need to get bro i'm about to bust out the grinder now and cut that fucking pipe man damn it that sucks oh well you gotta do what you gotta do now this transmission's nice and dry and go ahead and put the drain back in i will crank it down tight right now this is one of those kind of things i like to do bro like instead of just kind of just putting it in there for now so you don't lose it you know what i mean i want to crank it down tight as if i was putting fluid back in it right now you know what I mean? So just in case I do forget it because we are putting this back in a car, like, you know what I mean? So I, I don't forget it. <sighs> Make for a bad day, bro. Be filling the transmission up later and be like, oh shit, got a new stain on the ground. All right, here we go, man. I don't like having to cut the exhaust with a grinder. <laughs> you should use a sawzall, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot easier. It's just, it's hard to cut all the way around it, especially at the top, because you have to get between the exhaust and the actual body of the car. But anyhow, I'm gonna give it my best shot because in order for this engine to come out, it's gonna have to be cut. And unfortunately, he can't use this exhaust on the hatch. Well, it would have to be altered anyhow. I, I'm pretty sure it would just need to be shortened. But we'll cross that bridge whenever it comes, man. Anyhow, wish me luck, dude. I can't take the camera with me because, well, it's not gonna be safe down there for the camera. I'm trying to make this one last. Thanks again to Seth, by the way. If you guys haven't already, go check out his YouTube channel. You know, I would normally say effing Mustang, but nowadays I've been saying effing Chrysler 300. We have a Chrysler 300 problem in my neighborhood. And a Tequatcha problem. But anyhow, if you haven't checked out Seth, dude, go check him out, bro. I'll put his YouTube on the screen right now. He is the entire reason why we have a camera right now, dude. So go show that boy some love, man. Oh my god! You see, this is the reason why. Let me get this out here. I always recommend running a traction bar rather than hacking the shit out of the stock cross member. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> That's all it takes, dude. And that thing just folds in half. That's nuts. Remember, that thing braces the front of the car, bro. You know what I'm saying? I know, coming from Mr cutting cars up himself right but there are some points on the car that you do want structure and you do want rigidity you know what i'm saying i think the header might drop out now pull the dipstick yes sir oh 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 gotta get it from the bottom oh very nice my friend very nice man josh Josh, bro. If you guys didn't know, Josh is the guy that actually owns this car, the one that I'm doing the job for. Anyhow, Josh, bro, who the hell runs a catalytic converter on a Honda, bro? What are you doing? Get that shit out of here. Is it even gutted? No, it's not even gutted, bro. What are you doing? What are you freaking worried about emissions or something?
damn it, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I ran out of time. <laughs> the problem is I've just been kind of chilling, man. I haven't really been trying to rush through this, but got the axles out. Um, I got the axles out and I did put everything back together. So this thing is gonna be ready to just put the wheels back on it whenever we get the engine out. Just throw the wheels back on it and we can roll this thing out of the way. So I put the ball joints and the fork for the, uh, for the coilover and everything all back together and tighten back up. I got my tools all organized and cleaned up. All the parts that came off the car sitting over here in a pile. Like I get it, they're sitting in the dirt, but you gotta remember, I'm gonna pressure wash absolutely every single bit of this stuff, dude, uh, before it goes into the hatchback. So we gotta clean it all up anyhow. For the most part, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I mean, unless I forgot something somewhere, who knows? everything is disconnected even this heater line like it tripped me out too if you guys see it in the video but it's actually just cut it wasn't even hooked up to anything but yeah everything's disconnected so whenever i get back from picking up braven i just got to crawl underneath there get those bolts out of that t-bracket and pull it out then we just got to pull out the bolt on the two engine mounts and then bam dude we can just lower this thing down and then we'll raise the car up a little bit higher and slide the engine out the bottom and then the exciting part comes man we get to clean this motherfucker up so i don't look like this whenever i put the damn engine back into the hatch made it back home and guess what man no really guess if you were to guess that it's raining again, you'd be right. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. I mean, at least it's not raining hard, but it is getting wet up here a little bit. <sighs> Anyhow, I knew it was going to rain. Uh, we checked the forecast. It's supposed to start raining around noon. It's now almost 3 o'clock, and it's just now starting to rain. But that is the reason why I set the car up up here, because... I knew it was gonna rain, bro. Well, that and I wanted to work on concrete and not in the damn dirt, you know what I'm saying? But anyhow, we were basically ready before I took off, so now all we gotta do is we gotta get that T-bracket out, take the bolts out of these motor mounts, and then drop the engine, dude, and that should be pretty much it. So I'm gonna try to get underneath there and get that damn T-bracket first, so catch back up with y'all in a second. T-bracket acquired. All right, officially two bolts left, bro. Hey there, Brevin. Hello. Welcome to the video there, bro. How was school? It was aight. Was it aight? Aight. Guess what today is? Rainy day? No, Fool's Friday, man. Oh, we ain't yeah. got no school Friday. tomorrow. Yep. Anyhow, time to get these two bolts out. So, zip, 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 and then this thing will be done, bro. Barely clearing. Bon voyage. Easy peasy, bro. Got the engine pulled out. So now I'm going to actually go through, hit this thing with some degreaser. Use my little scrub brush, try to just basically get this thing cleaned up a little bit before we're gonna put this in the hatch. I'm not gonna put it in the hatch today. I just, my goal today was just to get the engine out, honestly. I wasn't even gonna degrease it today, but I figured that this video is probably a little bit too short just to end it right now. <laughs> but I did throw the header back on just so I didn't have to mask that area off. So now I don't have to worry about water getting in there, but we did go around, masked off his alternator so it doesn't get all wet and masked off all the little vacuum ports that are open, masked off the throttle body. So anywhere that obviously you don't want water to get, we got it all masked off. So now, time bro, it is time. Oh yeah. Time to fuck this shit up. <laughs> So as usual, I like to just hit it the first time. You kind of break all that built up stuff off, you know what I'm saying? So then you want to go through, just really drench this thing again, because you're not going to get it on the first go. Like it's a lot cleaner than what it was. Like look at the intake manifold. 
it's actually silver now you know what i'm saying but there was a lot of built up stuff right here it's still kind of dingy um there's a lot of built up stuff all down here and on the front of the block especially back there behind the header like plan on getting all that shit so but it did get a whole lot of it off just with that first pass now we'll take our little scrub brush get it nice and saturated with degreaser as well just go through and start scrubbing shit bro get in all the little nooks and crannies man try to get as much of this built up shit off of here just so it looks nice man you know, I saw a comment on uh, the video when we cleaned the engine bay, when we cleaned up the hatch. Somebody is asking where it is I got the scrub brush from. I got this from Harbor Freight. Dude, Harbor Freight has like a variety pack, a bunch of different scrub brushes and stuff that you can use for doing things like this. Um, they have variety packs, and then I think they also, like, you can buy individual brushes. So go check out Harbor Freight, dude. That is where I literally got all of my scrub brushes from, so... Here goes round two. guys pretty much done dude got my work area all cleaned up all the tools are put away i pressure washed off my uh porch you know clean up our mess engines cleaned up axles are all degreased and scrubbed down the t-bracket i've got pretty much everything sitting right here that we're gonna have to put into the hatch so it's cleaned up and it's freaking ready man just like the hatch we already cleaned up the hatch the engine bay everything bro like so whenever we do get to it everything's clean bro and it's ready you know what i'm saying so we don't have to worry about getting all filthy and disgusting and whenever it's all put in and it's finished it's just gonna look that much better because take pride in your work you know what i'm saying but anyhow guys i hope you enjoyed today's video i know it's just kind of a quick one yanking the engine out you know what i mean one step closer to getting that hatch done peace out and i'll see you on the next one man later braven see you later buddy friend pal amigo chum compadre sidekick hopefully we'll eventually get back to having some dry videos man jesus christ arizona <laughs>